This is the Riverhawk Report, a weekend recap for Tuesday, April 20th, 2010. Baseball, softball, track and field, and golf all in action at a variety of locations, and there were more winners than otherwise. It was, despite the raindrops, a good weekend and a good start to a new week. Baseball snapped out of its slumber, ended a six-game losing streak, and swept a doubleheader from Assumption Sunday in Worcester. 2-1 and 8-3 were the scores. Jared Noted Giacomo continues to hammer the baseball. He had five hits on the day, including two doubles, scored twice, and drove in two runs. Noted Giacomo got UMass Hole going in the first game. His sixth inning double ignited the Riverhawks' two-run rally that erased a 1-0 deficit and gave the team a much-needed win. The runs crossed the plate on a base hit by Peter Honoranto and on an assumption error. UMass Hole got terrific pitching in game one from Dustin Ramey. He threw a complete game, allowing just one run on seven hits and a walk. He struck out four. The second game found the bats banging away on a more consistent basis. The Riverhawks scored eight runs on ten hits. Notre Giacomo, Sean Burns, and JT Leary had key hits in the ballgame. Jack Weathersitch was solid on the mound. The left-hander went six innings, allowing just two runs. Struck out six. The bullpen effectively took care of the final three innings. The baseball Riverhawks are now 21-19, and 9-11 and 11 in the Northeast 10 Conference. They host Concordia in a single game on Wednesday. Pitching and three-run home runs have always been a good prescription for winning, and that's exactly what UMass Lowell softball did on Monday, a 6-1 win for the Riverhawks against Tufts. Softball is supposed to be a game dominated by pitching. That has not been the case this season. It appears at least, where the Riverhawks are concerned, that it is a hitter's game. The Riverhawks banged out 10 hits en route to the win. Eight different players had hits in the ball. We game. had good contributions uh, up and down and, and off the bench, and yeah, it was a good day. You know, probably felt like we could have put up a, a few more runs with how we hit the ball, but that's uh, that's the way. This is a funny game that way, and good stuff all the way around. That's River Hawk head coach Sean Cotter. The biggest hit of the day came early. Alyssa Boris hit a three-run home run in the first inning, and the game was never again in question. You know, especially uh, we talked about it. This is a building block for conference, and conference is a lot of runs scored. So the more you can get, the better off you are. And uh, to put three up early, it just gives the pitcher a little bit more of a, a, a breather. And um, we did that twice today putting up three spots in two innings, and uh, hopefully we can keep building off of that. Boris' home run was her eighth of the season, one shy of the team's single season mark. Boris and Hillary Hopkins had two hits on the day. Krista McKenzie, Stephanie Rollo, and Megan Guy had RBIs in a three-run fourth inning. And all of that offense was far more than starting pitcher Alyssa Bryan needed. She was in control, her second consecutive strong outing. Yeah, two good outings, so, you know, 12, 12 innings, uh, allowing two runs against uh, two quality hitting teams, and uh, so hopefully that's a good sign. She's going to have a really big uh, last uh, three weeks here for us, and uh, we, we need that, and that gives E a little bit of uh, e less, a little bit of uh, rest with her innings too. So um, hopefully we've got two two going now. The Riverhawks are now 15 and 20 with 16 games, mostly Northeast 10 Conference affairs left in the regular season. It is now the stretch drive. The coach says the team is close to playing the type of softball he wants to see at this point in the year. We're getting close, Bob. I, I don't know if we're there yet. We're we're, we're getting close to it, and hopefully. Hopefully we just uh, we just keep getting tougher, and, and that's what postseason's about. Is, is, is who's who's not always who's the best, but who's the toughest, and uh, we're getting close to that. The Riverhawks have two games with Bentley Wednesday at Riverview Field. UMass Lowell track and field athletes were scattered on two coasts and turned in solid performances. Shot putter Jackie Barrett won the shot put at the Larry Ellis Invitational, no, we're not related, at Princeton University with a throw of 49 feet, 11 and 3 quarter inches. It's the top throw in Division II in the country this year. Steve O'Brien and Ben Saviet each qualified provisionally for the NCAA championships in the 3,000 meter steeplechase at Princeton. On the Pacific Coast, Ruben Sanka qualified for the NCAA NCAA championships in the 5,000 meters. Haley Kateri is provisionally qualified in the 800 meters. UMass Lowell track athletes will spend next weekend at either the Penn Relays or the Brown Springtime Invitational. UMass Lowell Golf finished fourth in the Riverhawk Invitational at Meadow Creek in Drake during the weekend. Patrick Bean and Brendan Livingston were the top Riverhawk finishers. And that's the Riverhawk Report for Tuesday, April 20th, 2010. Ha, 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 ha.